Welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. In this video, we're going to be comparing the Beetle to the Model T. Now, ideally, I would have the Model T sitting here next to me, but unfortunately, it's too tall. It won't fit, it won't fit through the garage door, so I can't have them both in here. But I do have the Beetle here, and I will be putting up images of both cars as I discuss them. So, we're going to go over the similarities between the two, the production numbers, how long they're produced, um, things like that. And then we're also going to go over the cost that I personally um, paid for each of these two cars, what I spent to get them back on the road. Uh, and then at the end, we'll do a value comparison to see which one is more valuable. And I'll also talk a little bit about what I've earned uh, to date from YouTube for each of the cars. So stay tuned to that at the end. But so first we're going to talk about production. So it's amazing how similar these two cars are in the production numbers. So the Model T was produced from 1908 to 1927. So it was a 19-year run on the Model T. So in 19 years, they built 15 million Model Ts, 15 million of them in less than 20 years. The only car to ever exceed that, I believe, maybe the Mini is in this range too, but I believe the only car to ever exceed the production number of the Model T was the Classic Beetle, right? So the Classic Beetle was produced from 1938 to 2003. So that's a 65 year span. So they built this car for 65 years and in that time they made 15.4 million of them. So there are 400,000 more classic Beetles than there are Model T's, but it took 65 years for Volkswagen to do what Ford did in 19 years time. So very, very similar, 15 million of both of them. So when people look at the Model T, they always think that it's this extremely rare item. It should be in a museum and it's just this amazing piece of history that's just so hard to come by. And the reality, as you can see from the numbers, it's not hard to come by. They made as many Model T's as they made Beetles and you see Beetles everywhere. No one cares if you destroy a Beetle or if you modify it however you want, but people start getting upset if you start to change things from factory on the Model T. When the reality is there's just as many Model T's out there. So a lot of people ask me, you know, why am I not painting the Model T? And there's several reasons why. I really like the look of it. I bought it because I like the look of it. It didn't need to be painted. I knew it could be preserved as it was. I like the fact that it shows its age. I don't think a hundred year old car needs to look brand new. Um, but also, I mean, look at the numbers. There are 15 million of them. There are lots of shiny examples out there that are well preserved. Um, you know, there's room for a few ugly ones in the mix. They don't all have to look brand new to be enjoyed. And I like the way that it looks. Um, another factor real quick on why it's not painted, and this really isn't a factor for me personally because I didn't want to paint it from the beginning, but it doesn't make financial sense um, to paint that car. And you'll see as I go through the cost breakdowns that the cost of repairing the Model T is actually quite high compared to its value. So the value of the car, there's just not value there to put an expensive paint job on it. You would spend more on the paint job than the car's ever going to be worth in the end. So we'll get into that um, shortly, but basically that's the similarity between the numbers of cars produced. Just think of it that way. There are as many Model T's as there are classic Beetles, and I think that'll give you a whole different perspective on the Model T. Um, and then you probably won't be a surprise later when you find out some of the values. So, okay, first of all, we'll go over this particular Beetle. This is a 1969 Volkswagen Beetle. I bought this on eBay. I paid $3,000 for the car. Um, the cost that I put into it, I broke them down into categories and they're estimates, but they're pretty accurate. So um, for the wheels and tires, another thing that you'll find interesting in this um, is the, the things that I had to fix on the two cars are very, very similar. Um, so, and the costs are gonna be pretty similar too, you're gonna see. But so for the, for the Beetle, uh, wheels and tires, $750. I had the wheels, but that includes uh, five tires now because I got a spare, a new wheel for the spare, but I had the four wheels that are on the car and then that includes the hubcaps and the mountain bounce and all that stuff. So $750 for wheels and tires. The engine uh, was $900 in parts. The metal repair for the floor was $250. Other mechanical um, items, another $125. The pop-out windows for the back were $550. The roof rack and surfboard $300, money well spent in my opinion. Um, the interior was $1,300. Uh, 
that was for the full interior kit, carpet, um, and included new seat cushions uh, for the front seats, the steering wheel, the uh, wicker kind of rack that goes under the dash. So a lot of stuff on the interior. So that's $1,300. Axles and seals for the transmission. That was $250. Um, the seal kit, the rubber kit for the car, which was basically every rubber seal on the whole car, uh, that was $600. The windshield was 125. Other electrical bits like light lens covers. I uh, had to replace a lot of switches on the dash. Um, lots of things like that. Electrical issues uh, or items was another $250. The exterior trim uh, was another $150. So total parts that I put into the car was $5,550. So you take that. Uh, and at the $3,000 I paid for the car, and I have put $8,550 into this Beetle to get it in the condition it's in, get it drivable, and get it back on the road. Um, we're going to go through, uh, I think we'll, we'll go now to the Model T. I'll break that down, and then I'll come back and we'll discuss um, some of the other, like the revenue that I got from this car. So, okay, so the Model T, I mean the, the Beetle, we're at $8,550. For the Model T, the purchase price was $3,550. So almost the same as the Beetle, only $550 more. Uh, the tires, again, five tires, tubes, um, all that stuff, that was $800. The engine parts for repair were $600. The radiator on the Model T was very expensive. It was $825 just for the radiator. Um, other mechanical expenses, uh, another $600. That includes a lot of the stuff in the suspension, the rear end, um, lots of other things like that. So another $600 there. The electric coils uh, to make it run that are inside the car, that was $150 for the four of those. For the interior on the Model T, I spent $800. So it was less than the interior on the Beetle, but the Beetle was a kit and the interior on the Model T I had to make from scratch by hand. So there was a lot more work involved in that, even though the cost was less. Uh, the roof was $300. That was for the wood and the vinyl roofing. The windshield was $200. The taillights and turn signals and things that added at the end was another $200. So the total parts uh, cost for the Model T was $4,275. So if you add that to the cost of the car, which was $35.50, then you get a grand total of $7,825. So, if you look at the two cars complete, on the road, running, driving, mechanically sound vehicles, the Beetle is $8,550, and the Model T is $7,825. So very similar. They're both right around the $8,000 range, and that's kind of where I expected to be. It's a little bit higher than I expected on the Beetle, and it's slightly higher on the Model T, uh, but with the Model T, I started spending a little bit more towards the end just because it was starting to get so many views. And so I actually started to make a little bit of revenue back off the Model T. So we'll go over that real quick. So um, as you know, I'm posting these videos on YouTube and some may think um, that I'm earning a lot from those videos and that's how, I'm, um, that's how I can afford to, to build the cars. And you'll see that's not really the case. So the Model T has done extremely well uh, recently. It's done way better than any other build series I've ever had. It has really become popular in the last couple months and it has grown the channel extremely fast compared to what it was. Uh, it took a, a year and a half for me to get the first 10,000 subscribers and in the last, I don't know, three months I've got another 10,000 subscribers. Um, it, in that first year and a half I got about a million views and in the last like three months or so I've got another two and a half million views. So it really just took off uh, the Model T is doing really well. Uh, I'm very pleased with how those videos are doing and I'm very pleased with the growth of the channel. So thank you guys for subscribing and for watching. Now, that said, even though the Model T has done really well and even though those videos have been viewed a few million times uh, and it's by far done better than anything I've ever done in the past, the revenue, the total revenue to date for the Model T, all the Model T videos that have earned money, including the update videos, the total amount that they've earned back is $2,850. So, if you take the total of the Model T, I put in $7,825, you deduct the $2,850, that means I now currently 
have invested $4,975 in the Model T. That's what sitting right now as it is, that's how much I have invested in it. And if the videos continue to stay popular, maybe it'll even get to the point where I will earn back the full $7,800 that I put in the car and I'll have a free car in the end if things continue to go really well, which there's no guarantee they will. The videos could definitely slow down. Um, so that's an entire build of that car over a seven month period, um, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of hours, labor hours put into that car and it's nowhere near paid itself off, let alone made any kind of profit to me. So, so that kind of gives you an idea of uh, what you can expect from YouTube or what kind of re revenue you would get back. So real quick, we'll look on the Beetle. Now the Beetle videos are more typical for most of my builds. They haven't got nearly as many views as the Model T. Uh, but so the total revenue that the Beetle has earned back is only about $250. So again, very similar to the uh, Model T, the series on this car happened to be 18 videos. They were both 18 videos long. So the, the time period, the amount of work and effort and expense you can see is very, very similar on the two cars. One became popular on YouTube, one did not. One earned over, you know, close to $3,000. One earned less than $300 to date. Um, but so, so that gives you an idea of, you know, what these cars cost and, and what you can expect, even if you're doing the work yourself, um, to have invested in them when you have a running and driving car. Um, just as a quick note, I'll touch on the channel as a whole. Because like I said, it has grown quite a bit recently um, and it is now starting to earn a little bit of money uh, which is which is great I, I really uh, am, am pleased with it um, and I didn't go into this uh, thinking that this is how I'm going to pay my bills and then I'm going to make a living off of this that's that's not my expectation which is good because it's probably never going to be possible uh, at best it will hopefully be kind of a, a decent side gig as far as income goes but so just to, to let you know so it's been a little over a year and a half for the channel um, and I estimated that I probably have put in at least 3,200 hours because it's, it, it's between 40 and 50 hours a week for the life of this channel that I've been uh, investing in this uh, channel. And total, the total to date revenue that YouTube has paid me is $5,032. So in over a year and a half of working basically as a full-time job, um, I've earned $5,000 from YouTube. So that actually, um, it doesn't sound like, like much, obviously. It's actually better than I expected. Um, when I started the channel, I invested, I think, around $3,000 in camera equipment and a new computer and video editing software and all the things that I thought that I needed uh, to be able to produce these videos. And I always thought, you know, if I earned that back in the first year, I'd be happy. Well, I didn't earn it back in the first year, not even close. Um, but I have earned it back since because the Model T became popular. So I'm actually very pleased with that. Um, I think it's it's good. It, it has paid my upfront costs. Like I said, the it is the Model T, just the Model T videos alone are beginning to pay off what I invested in that car. So I may end up with a free Model T in the end. So I actually think that's that's really good. But so okay, now real quick, we will go over the value of each car. So like I said, um, we'll start with the Beetle. Uh, so I have $7,800 roughly invested in the Beetle. The average cost for the Beetle, and this is according to Haggerty's valuation tool, and this tool breaks down uh, four categories, kind of a rough condition to concourse, the nicest condition you can have. And the average price for a 69 Volkswagen Beetle is $10,900. So this car is somewhere in the $10,000 range. That's what it would be worth. On the high end for this model, 69 Beetle, you've got $50,000. On the low end, you've got $5,500. So that's the scale for a 69 Volkswagen Beetle. So for the Model T, again, same thing as four categories of prices. Um, I think you'll be surprised to find out what they're worth. So, the average price for a 1923 Model T, which is what I have, is $6,900. So I've known that since I bought it, not before I bought it, but after I bought it, I realized what the value was. And I've, I've done everything I could uh, with that in mind. 
So I've always been cautious with how much I spent on that car because I knew, you know, $7,000 is a nice running driving version of that car. Mine is not going to be painted. I assumed mine may only be worth $6,000 when it's done at best. And so I was very cautious not to spend uh, more than that. Like I said, I did, once this car started to earn back some money, I got, you know, thousand dollar check from YouTube and it basically came completely from the Model T videos. Then all of a sudden I felt okay putting another thousand dollars into the car because I knew uh, I could still probably sell it for what it was, what I had in it uh, at that point. And of course now it's made almost three thousand dollars back. So uh, like I said, the balance, I have about five thousand in the car currently, so I could sell it now um, and get all my money back and maybe make a small profit. That's not the plan. I don't plan on selling the Model T anytime soon. I'm going to keep it and enjoy it probably for years. I'd kind of like to have it when it turns 100 in a couple of years. So I'll probably keep it for that long. But so uh, basically, uh, well, let's see, I didn't do the um, the low and the high. So uh, for the, the Concourse, the nicest version of the Model T, you're looking at 18,000. For uh, the bottom end, you're looking at 4,400 for the Model T. So. Uh, I know a lot of you look at it and think I should restore it and it should be pristine and it should be preserved in a museum and you probably think it's a very valuable car, but the reality is it's just not that valuable. This $18,000 concourse car, if I were to try to make that car into this quality of car, I'd probably have thirty, maybe even $40,000 in it, getting it to this level and it would still only be worth $18,000. It would be a total financial loss. Um, so anyway. Hopefully that gives you guys some insight and so you can kind of understand um, what these things cost and why I made some of the choices I made as far as you know painting versus not painting cars. Really I, I lean mostly towards not painting them because I like the way they look but also it doesn't make financial sense most of the time to paint these cars. So anyway that's it for this week. Uh, that's it for this video guys. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already please consider subscribing. Bye.